So as a copywriter, there are many different types of copywriting that you can do for a client. I primarily focused on email copyright and email marketing. So in this video, I'm gonna break down two emails that we used to consistently enroll new clients into our Amazon coaching business. So just before we jump into looking at the emails and dissecting why it works and how I've actually written them, one, go into the description below and join my copywriting club, it's completely free. And two, I have an Amazon coaching business with a business partner of mine where we teach people how to start and grow businesses on Amazon. And as a way of growing that business, we used email marketing as a heavy driver to get customers into that business. So we gave away a free lead magnet. I think it was a free cheat sheet on how to get started with Amazon FBA or a free course. And then obviously once we had those people's emails, we were emailing them a couple of times a week with value driven emails to show that we knew what we were talking about, deliver trust and value, and then every now and again, just soft pitch them on what we have to offer. So these two emails are basically value-driven emails that we sent out. And the value-driven email is exactly what it does, exactly what it says on the tin. It's designed to deliver value to the reader. It's not essentially like a hard pitchy email or anything like that. It's just literally to build trust with people who are reading and who are interested in potentially being your customers who are on your email list. So I'm going to jump over to my screen now and we'll look at these two emails that I have prepared. All right, so as you can see, this is an email from last year and I'm just gonna walk through why this worked so well and helped us generate clients and just kind of like my thought process as to how I'm writing this when I'm doing it. So first thing, let's look at the subject line. Are you prepared for what's coming? That's very intriguing. It piques people's curiosity and people think like, what should I know that I need to be prepared for? So it is a little bit clickbaity, but essentially we're, in, we're all in this attention game. We're trying to get someone's attention and this is one of the best ways to do it. As long as you pay off the clickbaitiness in your email. So once people click that, they open my email and I kind of open it with a statement and I open it with by saying good news and bad news today. So it's it straight away people are like Christ is, you know, let's um, <laughs> need to keep reading to see what this good and bad news is. First, let's get the bad news out of the way. So I'm kind of preempting the fact there are some good news towards the end, which I'm hoping people would continue reading because they want to learn about this good news. I mean, you could do this either way. You could share the good news first and then people would obviously be motivated by the fear factor of something bad to continue reading your email to find out what that is. But I went with the opposite and said, look, first let's get the bad news out of the way. Do you watch the news? It's kind of hard to avoid. The word recession has been on the tip of everyone's lips for the past year. So, let, so it begs the question, have you ever thought about building a recession protector of your own? A way of safeguarding yourself in cases things in case things do take the inevitable dip? I know it's something I'm always thinking about. Now, what about the good news? So before I've done that, what I've done here is I've played on the fact that an Amazon business is something you can build um, to future-proof your life because you're, it's like an independent income and having a, an asset of your own, your own business. So I'm kind of hinting at that and trying to get people to think like, you know, have you ever thought of building a recession-proof asset or acquiring a, a recession-proof asset other than your payroll from your nine-to-five job, which is a lot where a lot of our clients came from? Have you ever thought of that? So just kind of like planting the seeds almost. Now, what about the good news? <clears throat> so then people are thinking, well, what is the good news about a recession? And I'm like, yep, seriously. Thing is, spending never stops. People need to buy things. People still, people are still buying things. People still need things. And that's one of the things that makes an Amazon business perfect if you're looking for financial stability. So at this point, I'm kind of like switching the context of the email and kind of showing how the recession side of things links to having an Amazon business, right? And there's always ways for you to create multiple streams of healthy profits. Is it gonna happen overnight? No. But when you know what you're doing and you have proven roadmap to follow, there are opportunities literally everywhere. So I'm kind of being quite truthful with people here because they're probably used to seeing like people saying that they can earn X amount of money over, not overnight, but like really fast. Whereas I'm trying to be really truthful and honest saying, look, it's gonna take a little bit of time and just be kind of like down to earth and casual about it. And these orange highlight sections is where I would put a link in. So this would go to learning more about what we have to offer. And 
So I'm just basically saying there's opportunities everywhere and you can build a business like this also spending more time with your kids, working full t- well also spending more time with your kids, working a full-time job and taking care of yourself. Bottom line, this is the best defense against any kind of attack on our economy. So that's kind of like the statement of this email. And here I am kind of like future um, forecasting what this could potentially look like if they had an Amazon business. So these are kind of pulling at the, the strings of people people's desires. So our prospects, they want to be more independent. I mean, they want more streams of income. And then you ask the questions, why do they want that? It's because they want to spend more time with their kids. They want to take care of themselves. Some people want to do it on the side of their own, their, their full-time job. Some people literally like their full-time job. Uh, but also, some people want to build this on the, on the side of their full-time job as a side gig to begin with. And then in time, they can transition away from their full-time job into this Amazon business if they want. And then I've just got a simple call to action. Click here if you're interested in learning more about building a recession protect for yourself with an Amazon business this year. And then I sign off. Uh, any questions, just kind of like invite them to either reply with a message or even just go and check out our YouTube channel just to keep hitting them with touch points because you want to be consistent with your messaging with this. People may see one of your emails, one of your YouTube videos, one of your Instagram videos, but you have to be consistently hitting them with regular messages so you become the person that's top of mind when they think, oh, I want to build an Amazon business. Who do I go and speak to? Oh, the guys, Alex and Peter from Product Launch Ninja. There's, there's who I go and speak to. So that's kind of where that went with this email. It's a very short email. I try to keep my emails as short as possible. I just think it, they, they engage better, but an email doesn't have to be short. It can be long, just not boring. That's probably the best way to put it. And this one here is the next email. So your subject line, your Amazon order has been dispatched. Now, instantly, you would think that is a little bit clickbait. It is. But also, this is the same subject line that Amazon uses when you buy some off Amazon. So this is a really interesting email. So I'm basically pulling on the strings of like, that's the sort of confirmation message you'll receive when you place your very first product order. A message like this represents money in the bank for someone who has cracked the code of selling on Amazon. Likewise, there's one thing that enables some sellers to reach this milestone faster than almost anyone else. It's a proven product research system that just works like clockwork while being easy to understand. So a lot of people struggle with finding their first product and actually understanding uh, Amazon as a whole. So I'm kind of playing on that and trying to use that to my advantage. Meaning you can quickly uncover product after product with relative ease. Keen to get started on Amazon, hit reply to this email and let me know. I'd love to get in the past success. So again, I've got a call to action there. Really soft call to action. I don't like using overly pitchy calls to action in my emails. I want to try and you know, play the long game with this, deliver as much value as possible. And then for those who are interested in taking the next step, they naturally will come to us for more information and put their hand up at any offers that we have available. So yeah, two super short emails, but very powerful. And then when people start replying to these emails, we can obviously book them into calls and just talk to, talk to them more about an Amazon business and whether this is actually right for them. So there's obviously many different types of emails that there are obviously many different types of emails that you can write. This is two examples of value driven emails. So these are kind of just engagement emails that we would send just to keep clients interested in what we're offering and, and just delivering as much value as we can. We've obviously got like welcome sequences, um, campaigns where we're actually selling or pitching something. There are many different forms of email sequences when it comes to copywriting, but Hopefully that gives you some insight into how I think about my emails when I am going through them and who I'm writing to, how to think about things. Uh, maybe I'll do an even deeper breakdown of actually writing an email from scratch. I think that might probably be quite helpful for people. If you have any questions on that, hit me in the comments below and make sure you join my free copywriting club. There's a link in the description and I'll see you over there.